Yeah, yeah. Looking at my watch, it say it's time to get it. Yeah, talking about my guy, this every. Yo, 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 great day. Good morning. What's good, good people? Zoe Events, Alonzo Events. Um, I was about to go in and call it out of Columbia, South Carolina. <laughs> Just used to being on Zoom calls, you know? But uh, great day, great day. This is Soul Service, which is the YouTube channel for Soul Ministry. If you don't know, so if you haven't looked up the ministry, y'all, check it out. Check it out, dsm.org. Check us out on Facebook on uh, Soul Ministry or Soul Service with the with the group. Check in, y'all. Check in. And uh, I will humbly ask for your help because I'm not active on social media, really, you know. But what we could really use is more conversation. We could really use more engagement in the group because, uh, as you know, we ain't no good unless we're doing the work of God. Like, that's what, that's what makes us fruitful on this earth. But, uh... I want to get right into this word and just the it's heavy and something about this word it was hindered and when I mean it was hindered like I just realized this this morning it was incomplete I was right I had wrote I had studied right randomly not randomly but randomly my wife and I over the last few nights we've been reading the word to one another right so last night she read what she was reading from which was Philippians and last night um, it was my turn to read, right? And I was like, I didn't read from where I was studying from, which was Proverbs. And then um, and uh, I had visited James. I was in, I believe it was Zechariah. I had been, I've been in a lot of different places, right? But I was like, All right, I'll just go to James. And I couldn't remember which chapter I was on, so I just went to three and started reading. And it completed the word. God is so perfect. He is so perfect. It completed the word. So this morning when I got up and started studying back in Proverbs 10, it brought fullness or completeness to this word. So you, you're about to be fed. So pay attention. Chime in. Don't just let this play in the background and not pay attention. Lord God, your name is holy. Your will is done. I pray that your people pay attention to your word. That they not be foolish. That they not be foolish and die for the lack of wisdom. But that they tune in, that they hear your word, Father. Spend time with you. May they truly see themselves. May they see your design. May they recognize your position. <laughs> May they recognize your position, the position of your son. May they be honest about what's in their hearts. And Lord God, I pray that we really walk, not just this word, but may we be nourished and fed from your word. It's in Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and read the word, y'all, and we're going we're gonna to get into this thing. And, yep, I got to read my notes. So something I've learned about myself is that my communication is more effective when I've documented it, when I've written it down. And sometimes I, I got it's because I got to capture these thoughts because I'll get to talking and then I'll forget the point or, you know, I'll skip over something because of how this is wired. But when I'm able to document it or write it down, I'm able to make it clear to myself because I, I like to read as well. So when I can write it down and it's clear and I can really say I feel that spirit move, then I know it's like good. Then I know it's good. And on that note, read the book. Read the book. Who knew? You know what? Boom. Who knew? I don't know if I can flip it around the right way. <laughs> Who knew? It's uh, it says by Alonzo Zoe Vinch, but the spirit is in that thing. The spirit is in that thing. So make sure you check it out either on Amazon or on the website. But uh, let's get into it. Let's get into it. I don't even have the right verse pulled up, so it's gonna take me a second to get back to where it was, where I was. Let's see, Proverbs 10. There we go. So we have Proverbs. 10 18 through 21 18 through 21 let's go he that hides hatred with lying lips and he that utters a slander is a fool and a multitude of words that want that wanteth not sin that word is lack that lacks not sin and the multitude of words that lacks not sin but he that refrains his lips is wise refrains is restraint 
The tongue of the just is his choice silver. The heart of the wicked is little worth. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for want of wisdom. As you can see, the Proverbs themselves are deep. They're deep. And uh, thankfully, I wrote. Thankfully, I wrote. Thankfully, I wrote. So if you don't write, sometimes you just need to capture your thoughts, whether it be to get them organized, whether it be to get things written down, get them off your heart, your chest. Write them down. Even if it's what you don't want to hear, or don't see, right? Because sometimes when we revisit where we were, we get fed from it. Lord God, keep me on track. Thank you. So it's three major points. Three major points, right? And I want to show you, I'm going to show you all this too. Boom. It's just a page. Just a page of notes, Not, nothing major. But I got different colors on it. I use different colors of ink when I write. So... There's three major points. You see three things about the tongue or about our speech. You see the foolish use of the tongue or foolish speech. You'll see restraint and control. And then you'll see the heavenly speech nurtures and nourishes. So I'm going to just read and then I'm going to let the spirit lead. Right. So on the surface, we can look at these verses as do's and don'ts. Right. That's surface level do's and don'ts. Don't do this. Do this. But what's funny about the do's and don'ts is that the spirit isn't in that. Right. It's about the spirit that you operate in. I hope you understand that. But in order to embody these verses and any other, the words have to come alive for us in our heart. And I believe that's what God was doing when I was working to deliver this message or deliver this word. Is it took time for it to come alive. Right. It took time for it to be brought to its fullness, its completeness. So, Lord, I pray that the living word dwells within us. And that we truly embody your spirit and who you call us to be, our natural faces. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. So, the word hide here. The word hide is called saw. And it means to conceal, hide, or to cover. So, con to conceal hatred with deception, fraudulence, or falsehood makes us foolish. To heal, to conceal hatred with falsehood, lies, deception it makes us foolish and to speak and it says that word to speak is to draw out or to lead out so if you're drawing out or if you're leading out slander slander here is the ball dib ba and it means defamation evil report or an unfavorable saying so to draw that out saying it's a fool foolish and <laughs> i'm gonna just admit right now guilty as charged right red-handed <laughs> red-handed i'm guilty i have concealed my hatred by lying i've slandered right but why do we why do we lie and that's a that's a deep and intriguing question why do we lie and we can spend a lot of time there right why do we lie and in this case lie about hating something so we hate something, we dislike it, and then we lie and say we don't. We, nah, I'm good. Or, that ain't no big deal, right? We hate it and we lie and say we don't, right? So I've done it to prevent from hurting people's feelings, right? Or to keep up an image, yep. Or to avoid conflict. Like some of us are so avoiding of conflict that we just lie, right? Or some of us, we put off as if we're concerned for that person's feelings so we decide oh we have to lie to protect their feelings and we're not that person like we're making decisions for them right there's a million different reasons <laughs> why we lie right and there's a lot of different reasons why I've done it right don't lie about it that there's a lot of different reasons why I've done it but the reality is that it's foolish. Regardless of how you chop it up, what your reasoning is, it's foolish, right? What ends up happening is I have to perpetuate the lot and put myself in the worst predicament. And uh, this was the part, see, I, I, see that, that, was, that was yesteryear. That piece was yesteryear. When I say yesteryear, this is over a week ago when I wrote this thing down. Now this morning it came to an even more fulfilling place it and I love it because experience right experience and what you, what happens in life just brings 
testimony. It brings completeness. So lying is like avoiding a toll or upfront cost to get to the same place. Just imagine being on a toll road and you see that you see that you got to pay a toll. You see it coming up. You see the signs just telling you, look, this toll road, two actual vehicles, three actual vehicles, whatever. You go pay this amount of money. And instead of just paying the toll to go on the turnpike, wherever you are, you decide you're going to take you go go some other route. Right. Look, I'm going to try to avoid this dollar, this two dollar, whatever the toll is. And what ends up happening, y'all, when you hop off that toll road, you hit traffic, you hit roads that suck, right? <laughs> Back roads with deer running across them. <laughs> you, you be in a, in a backwoods, can't find a way to get gas. Like, there's a lot of different stuff that happens when you're just trying to avoid that one, two dollar, maybe even four or five dollar toll, depending on what bridge you're crossing, you know? But what's interesting about it is that the cost is still due the price is still due the mileage is longer on those back roads so now you're paying for gas on the back end you might have the gas in the car right now but on the back end when you run out you still got to pay it guess what that gas might even be more expensive what's interesting about paying the cost yo it's like you're going to either pay up front or you're going to pay on the back end right but what's funny about the back end is it comes with past due fees it comes with interest like that cost is going to and sometimes it's double i think about how is it saving saving quote unquote saving money in real estate right like we try to find cheaper contractors and all this other stuff so that we can save money up front and then years later you end up with a leaking roof tell me why i'm talking about it guess why i'm talking about it because my roof is leaking <laughs> if we're going through it right now we're having you know Contractors come out, put dehumidifiers down, repair the roof. Like we, we have to do it regardless of how you look at it. And then guess what? You still got to pay those people to do their work. So the same work has to be redone. Yo, I, I hired a contractor and I, this is my personal, my personal residence, right? So we hired one to do a few different, a lot of different things. Everything this man touched, everything this man touched has had to have been redone by someone else because I was saving money. Now, had I paid, you know, another 15, $20,000 up front, up front, I wouldn't have had to worry about it. I wouldn't have had to worry about it. I would have paid the toll, kept it moving. But guess what? I wanted to save money, y'all. I wanted to save money, I'm penny pension. So now that, guess what? Now the fees are due. The interest is accrued. And guess what? It's at one of the worst times ever. So word of wisdom is to pay the fees up front, pay the toll up front. Like we know what they are, just pay it. And I'm not talking about just financially. I'm talking about tell the truth up front, up front. Don't lie and say you don't like and you like something and you don't because that toll is going to come due. And when it comes due, it's going to be with fees. And it's going to be with interest. Because now, right, what ends up happening is if we don't have the means or we believe we don't have the means to pay that toll when it comes back around, now you're living with deficiency is what we used to say in uh, Newport News Shipyard. Shout out to Newport News Shipyard. You're living with deficiencies. You become complacent. Now the door's hanging off the hinges and you just live with it. The relationship is broken, right? <laughs> There's no trust in the relationship, right? You're not getting what you want. The, the partner, the spouse ain't getting what they want, whatever the case is. And then you just kind of limp along with it as if the conditions don't exist because you've been hiding the truth for so long. We got to speak the truth up front, y'all. We got to be up front with it. Get it out there. He who hides hatred with lying lips is a fool. It's foolish. It's foolish. So we speak the truth. And here's the next part, but we show restraint. We show control, we show restraint, Restraint, excuse me. So you speak with the truth, but show restraint. And why? Because what comes out of the mouth is from the heart. But what do we know about the heart? The heart is wicked. It's wicked, yo. So look, not only do we have to speak the truth, 
but we have to be honest about what's in our wicked hearts. We got to be honest. Stop hiding it. Stop hiding it. We're trying our best to, to choke down the truth. And what actually happens is it comes out in all of our actions, all of our selfish intentions, all of our wickedness. It shows. It shows. And anyone who's paying attention can see it. So why are you lying about it in the first place? Because we everybody sees it. So there's no need to even try to hide, be honest about it. But with restraint, what comes from the mouth is from the heart and the heart is wicked. Let's you can check Jeremiah 17, 9. I wanted to read that one. I'm going to read that, y'all. I'm not going to we're not going to play around with this thing. Jeremiah 17, verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can control it? Right. And it was another reference. Mark 7, 21 to 23. And when I read this one this morning, it brought tears to my eyes, yo. Like, this word is alive. And I hope, I hope you guys get fed like this when you guys are reading the word too. So 21 through 23, Mark 7. For from within, for, for from within, out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evils come from within and defile the man. It's not the devil that jumped in me. <laughs> um, I laugh about that. And it's funny and not funny because old school used to say the devil didn't jump in me. And I was having a conversation with my son a few nights ago. And he said, I just don't know why, why I do bad things. I just don't know why. He's like, it's like the devil just, just come... He gets in me and he does. I was like, son, look. And he's six. He's six talking like this. And I praise God for that. I was like, son, look. No, that's not That's not the devil. I'm, that's not the devil. And he's just looking at me like, why is he saying that? Because he's around also his grandparents. And that's something that they say. Not thinking about it. They don't even think about what they're saying, right? Because we got all this stuff that comes out of us that we don't even think about, things that we believe and don't even realize or recognize or examine why. They're just saying these things. He picking up on it and he's saying, I don't know why the devil just comes out of me. He just makes me do bad things. I was like, son, no, we, mm -mm. I'm sorry to tell you, but he, mm -mm. that's not the devil. That's you. <laughs> that's, that's you. That's me. That's us. Like, son, look, no, it's not the devil. That's our flesh. And that's what we war against. That's what we battle against. That's what we're killing. That's why we need Jesus Christ. That's why we need God, because of how filthy we are on the inside. And when we're honest about it, then we can face it and then we can change our ways. But when we're giving the authority over to the enemy, to the devil, whom we already have victory over. That's when we cripple ourselves. So I was telling them, look, no. No, that's you, son. And what's good about that is that it's OK because it's that's natural. And what's also good about it is that you have. In authority, you have the victory already. So whatever that thing is for you, you have the victory already. Praise God for it. Thank God for it. But we have to come in truth and in honesty and give that thing to, like give it give it away and change your ways. Repent. Like it's that it's I say that simple. No, it's not easy, but it is simple. But this is the conversation I was having with my son. I was like that. The good part is. The good part is that you can give it to God and he can change your heart. And that's why we spend time in showing you the narrow path, right? Little pill. I don't know if you guys, um, Pilgrim's Little Journey, I believe the name of it is a book. If you have children, read that book with your kids. So you can, so you can, they can get a picture, a mental picture of what it looks like to really walk the life of a Christian, the life of a believer. Like that book is phenomenal when it comes to teaching, teaching children in a way, in the ways of the Lord. But we show restraint because we know what's in our heart, right? Let me go back to what I what I wrote. Make sure I got all this stuff. So when we speak from the heart, the heart of ours, it becomes obvious 
of all the places, all the things that we haven't allowed Yeshua, Jesus Christ, to purify us of. And in Revelation, it said his feet was compared to gold tried in the fire. Hear this, gold tried in the fire. One of the most, like God's money, right? Silver and gold, not platinum and it was, yeah. Silver and gold, that was, but it was tried in the fire. It was pure value, pure value. No, no other intent, nothing mingling in it, just pure value value when I praise God for it. So if you have bitter envy, and this is James 3 and 14, and this is what brought the word to, to completeness. This is the part that brought the word to completeness when I was reading this last night. So James 3 and 14 says, if you have bitter envying and strife in your heart, glory not, don't boast, right? And lie not against the truth. This is the same thing Proverbs tells us, y'all. He said, if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not. So don't boast about that trash. Don't be zealous about your selfish intentions, right? And also don't lie about it. Don't lie about it. It says this wisdom, verse 15 says this wisdom to lying about what's in your heart. This wisdom it isn't from above. So what is it, man? It brings a whole nother topic to it because it's saying this is a, there's a wisdom that's from above. And then there's a wisdom that's earthly, sensual, and demonic, right? <laughs> oh, oh, gosh. Just because you're operating in wisdom doesn't mean it's a heavenly or godly wisdom. The enemy has wisdom too, y'all. And unfortunately, that's the wisdom that we're, that we're brought up in. Like we say, oh, my God. Hmm. So I don't want to, I'll put myself out there, but I don't want to speak for anybody else. See, some of the things we were raised up in and taught when we were growing up, they sound wise and they are wise, but it's not heavenly or godly wisdom. See, what's interesting about God's wisdom, heavenly wisdom, and it, is, it isn't always logical. Like, I'm destitute, I'm low on funds, and the word says give. What? Why? Why would I do that? Right? Like it doesn't make logical sense. But then you have to trust God's promise and his word and recognize that it never returns void. It never returns void. So you give, he said, and I will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on you so you don't have room enough to receive it. Y'all listen, hear, hear God's truth, like hear the words. And believe it's true in your heart. And then that's when it comes to life in us. Praise God for it. Because we walk it out. I'm going to leave that there. And zeal in these verses in James refers to excitement of mind and self-seeking. He said, for where there is bitter envying and strife, there's confusion in every evil work. So when we get the excitement of mind or zealous about our self seeking about what we want, then all of those evils that Mark 7, 21 to 23 talks about lasciviousness, adulteries, fornications, all those things, it pours out of us because that's what we really want. Like that's what we, <laughs> when we haven't given our hearts over, that's what we really want. So that's what pours out. And that's what you need to be given to God. That's why we need to die to ourself daily, put that stuff up on the cross and really walk in the word of God. Like his truths, his promises. Here it is, y'all. Here it is, y'all. So we'll get excited or see an opportunity or say whatever's necessary to get what we want or hide our true intentions. And God's children ought not so to be. Sweet water and bitter should not be coming from the same fountain. Should an olive bear figs or figs bear olives? No, it should not be. So from our hearts, who's supposed to be driven and given to God, should not be pouring out lies, right? Shouldn't be pouring out filth. Y'all like, hear this, hear this. And then the third part, heavenly speech. Heavenly speech is valuable and it nurtures, we flip the page, flip the page. <laughs> Heavenly speech is valuable and it nurtures. 
Proverbs 25 and 11 says a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and pictures of silver. Not only is it highly valuable, but it nurtures. It goes into our soul. Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word, every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And that's why we got to stay in our word. And we got to, as we live and walk this thing out, we have to let it come alive in us. Yup. Yup. The laborers are few. Facts. The laborers are few. The ones who are walking this thing out, serving their few. But the harvest is plenty. And that's why verse 21, I believe it is in Proverbs that we read. I don't know. 18 through 21. Yeah. Yeah. 10, 18, 18 to 21. The blessing of the Lord. Nope. The lips of the righteous feed many. Right. The righteous. Right. The laborers are few. The laborers are few. The lips of the of the righteous feed many. But fools die for lack of wisdom. Why? Because they don't receive that word. They don't receive that word. So don't be a fool. Lord God, your name is holy. Your name is holy. Your will is done. I thank you for this timely, this timely word that is not of me. That is not of me, Lord, but it's of you. So I thank you for allowing me to be a tool for your use. And I pray that I'm always, always available for you to use. Help me to master this thing, to walk it out, Lord, so that your light shines so bright through me that it covers all this filth, all this filth. So I pray that your people have heard and received your word, that they walk it out in their lives, and that I walk it out in my life to its perfection. It's in Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. I love y'all sincerely. Later.